Father's love, right? Oh, he is right. Oh, man. He just bet me 10 bucks that was called How Deep is the Father? And I said, no, it's the Father's love. I'll pay you later. Okay. Just kidding. Numbers chapter 12. Don't you love that, though? We ought to sing that one. Is it in the songbook? We won't sing it tonight. Man, I love that song. Music is real powerful. And if you don't think so, there's something wrong. Come on. Number chapter 12. If these songs don't get to you sometimes, I'm not saying all the time you got to cry and this and stuff. And there's some times you just, you're kind of numb to everything. Amen? Amen. But buddy, if, if some of these, these uh, hymns don't get to you, man, there's a, their pilot lights out or something. You need to relight it. There's something... Something going on with the sound. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now God emphasized that. Did you just notice that? He married an Ethiopian. Why would he tell us that? Why do we need to know that he married? An Ethiopian woman. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? In other words, they're saying, look, the, how come you, does, does God just speak to you, preacher? What about us? That's what Miriam was complaining about. And that goes without saying, of course he does. But back then, you got to remember, they didn't have Bibles back then, like you and I have. Okay. But God can still, still talk to people, but he chose to talk to Moses face to face. Hello? Yes. Now, I want, I want you to get your mind starting working on this. Has he not spoken also by us? But, and the Lord heard what Miriam said. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. We never think about that. We think Moses was a great prophet. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't a preacher. Okay? Uh, Moses was very meek above everybody. You don't think of Moses like that, do you? Hello? Come on, and even Hollywood, man, they gave, you know, Charlton Heston. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam, Come out ye there unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And, and they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and he called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth because they were complaining. Remember, whenever you complain about the preacher, God hears that. You can always come to my office, and we can work anything out. We'll try if you got a complaint, but do not talk behind my back. Not because I'll get to you. God will get to you. The office, you need to respect the office. You not, might not respect me, but you really respect this office of pastor. Because God is listening. And, and tonight, look, look up here. I'm not preaching to anybody. There's nobody. Nothing happened. Okay? But uh, this is a message that every church needs every once in a while. Okay? And the Lord spoke suddenly, verse 4, into Moses and Aaron. Or verse 5. 
And the Lord came down the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle, called Aaron and Miriam. They both came forth and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. You thought he was a preacher, didn't you? My servant, you thought he was a prophet, didn't you? My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. He was just a faithful servant. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall behold. Wherefore, then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Ooh, I bet you they were shaken. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. I, was no, uh, it goes without saying, Aaron was shaking in his boots, right? And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly. And wherein we have sinned. Okay? We're going to pray, and we'll get right into the prayer. I know you want to get home and spend some time with your dad or whatever you're going to do. Brother, come pray for us. Bow ahead. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for everything you've done for us up to this point. Just today, Lord, you work through us every day, each and every day. Um, Lord, I pray that you would help um, as our singers come and they sing for you, Lord that the message of the song would touch hearts. Lord, each song that you've given us is praise unto you, or praise of what you've done for us, Lord. I thank you again for today, and in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.
emotions, whatever happens in my life, I've made my decision, no matter what the price, I choose Christ, when everything choose faith, I choose to trust, to believe He is good. He'll come through like He said He would every time. Oh, I choose Christ. I believe He is good. He'll come through like He said He I choose Jesus Christ, the owner of all heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. I choose God. I love that. Thank you. Julie, that's the prettiest dress I've seen you wear in a long time. Where are you at? Oh, yeah. Honey, I love that dress. Cindy, your dress is very nice, too. I noticed, sir. That dress is awesome. Thank you. Ladies, you, you, you sing good together. I appreciate that. Amen. I was looking for a microphone. Uh, remember when I used to have a Tammy Faye mic? I used to hold it all the time. Most of you don't. What, what did I title this? Boundaries, Order, and Structure. We know that the spirit of rebellion is involved at this point in the life of Miriam. Moses is in the process of building a nation out of a group of slaves. That's a pretty hard job, you think? Amen. So there's really no order right now. And then on top of that, Moses is trying to get, every, get some order in millions of people, and we got this lady, she's complaining about God speaking to Moses. And, you know, she's talking to Aaron who's later going to be the high priest, the only person that God will speak to in the Holy of Holies. And, but you got this lady, you know, she's yakking her mouth, and Moses thinks that God can't speak to us too. And uh, so well, let me just give you some points, and we'll go eat. You ready? Jesus can bring you out of something quicker than you can bring it out of you. Uh, that's not, that was for later. I don't know what happened to this thing. Uh, let me just give it to you, okay? It takes years to turn a crowd into a church. It takes years to turn a crowd into a church. It takes years to turn I do into a marriage. Hello? Uh, it takes years to turn a family or a group of kids and a mom and dad into a family. <clears throat> Moses is trying to get order in a crowd. And we're seeing here in the text disorder. So God himself comes down as he hears these two people complaining, especially Miriam, and he says, come out of the tent. I got something to tell you. Eesh. Face to face, that's God. I can't wait to speak to some of these people in the Old Testament. How, I mean, what did you see, actually? What, I mean, how did it go? I mean, weren't you scared to talk to God face to face? And so it's brought about by a woman who is meddling in some, something that really is none of her business. And who is it? Because she, she's complaining about Moses marrying this Ethiopian woman. You know, I don't, most, most preachers think it's because she was black and Moses was white. Moses probably wasn't white. He was probably olive colored like Jesus was. We don't know, uh, but 
a lot of preachers say a black shouldn't, uh, uh, a white shouldn't marry a black or vice versa. That's nowhere in the Bible. That's nowhere in the Bible. If it was in the Bible, I'd preach it, okay? You can marry a green person if you want to. I don't care. As long as both are saved and you're following Christ, what difference does it matter what color your skin is? In God's dear name. Come on. And I don't know if she was thinking that or not. The Bible doesn't tell us. Uh, but she had problems with Moses marrying this Ethiopian woman, but it's none of her business. It's none of your business who, 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 who else marries who anyway. You got enough problems with that woman you married in the first place. Amen. Ladies, you got enough problems with the man. You can say amen, ladies, with that man you married in the first place. Okay, uh, so Moses had liberated them from the oppression. He had, uh, God had used Moses. Moses was a hero, man. He had, he went to Pharaoh who could have just chopped his head off. And uh, he got all these people. Of course, it was God who did it. But God used Moses, who was the meekest man above, in, in earth, the Bible says, of all. The meekest man. He didn't want to do it. In fact, he gave God the thing. I can't speak. Okay? Nobody understands me when I speak, kind of like John Smith, man. Nobody understands South Carolina, okay? Uh, so, uh, but God can bring you out of something. Oh, here it is. We got it. I guess I missed giving him that other Jesus can bring you out of something quicker than he can bring it out of you. Does that make sense? I don't know. It made sense when I wrote it down, okay? When he brought the people out of Egypt, Okay, that was easier than bringing Egypt out of them. When you get saved, God can save you pretty easy. He can bring you from hell to heaven pretty quick. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it's, it takes a little bit longer to bring the world out of you. Smoking, drinking, cussing, pornography, lust, you name it. Okay, it takes a while sometimes. Now, that's not all the case. Some people get saved, they quit everything from the world. They do. They, well, that's not the case with me. It took me a while. So his reaction or her reaction not caught up with her reality. She was set free. And Moses was the one that did it. And now she's complaining, okay, about uh, Moses marrying an Ethiopian woman and uh, she thought Moses was saying that God can only speak to me. No, Moses never said that. God said that. You're going to take your complaint, take it to, take it to God, my, my friend. And, and by the way, God put me here in this pulpit. You don't want this job. I guarantee you couldn't handle this job. I can barely handle it all because I'm married to Julie. That's the only reason why. You don't know how true that statement was. You, you preachers, you better find the right wife that God has for you. And I did. And so that's why I'm still here after so many years. Uh, number one, you ready? We only got 17 points. Created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's not number one. But that's what has to happen on a daily basis. Do you ask God to wash away your sins every day? And create a good spirit because you had a bad spirit because you talked about somebody or you you know what you did. Nobody needs to know what you did. That's between you and God. But but after it, do you say, God, please forgive me? Like his testimony. He went to God and said, God, please forgive me for getting angry at that dude. Okay? Uh, please. <laughs> I'm driving by there now. I'm going, God, please shut that place down every time I drive by it. Uh, I don't know if I should do that or not, but I said, God, deal with those people because they kicked you out of their thing. That's right. Amen. I don't know. I, I know they. I shouldn't want to shut down people's jobs, but uh, I don't know. I don't know why I said that and ratted on myself. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> Number one, are we still reacting to something in our past that God has drowned in the Red Sea? Well, the verse, the Bible talks about it. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. That's what Jesus does to your sins. We're the ones who bring it up. Haven't you heard me say that all the time? 
We're the one that brings up our past. He never does because he buries it. God is not about the past. He is about what he can do with you. How you can bring Jesus glory. That's what he's concerned about. You stay in Bible college and you graduate and you start serving God. That's what he's... You keep coming to church less and God will use you. You'll get involved. And, and, and you'll, he'll use that couple right there. He will. Amen. You keep coming. That's what he's concerned about. He's not concerned about your past. Everybody has a past. Whoopee. Some people are too proud about their past. I don't mention too often where I came from, what I used to do. I do give testimony and how God brought me out of the pit, but don't get too proud about what you used to do. Be more proud about God and how far he's brought you. You don't have to mention the specifics all the time. Hello? <clears throat> Let's not contaminate our present life and future with our past. That's what I was trying to say. Amen. Uh, when I'm at my desk, it sounds better, okay? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <clears throat> when Julie writes my sermons, it sounds really good, but when I get up here and try to do it, I'm going to preach another truth she gave me about the thief on the cross. I won't take credit for it. I'm working on it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, you know, women can get truths too, you know. Hello. They shouldn't preach, but they can teach truths and they can, they can tell truths and everything else. Probably better than we can. <clears throat> so instead of being grateful, she says, I don't think the, this woman is right for Moses. <laughs> uh, there you are, picking my life partner for me again, Miriam. Okay, you have no right. That's, that's none of your business at all. At all, Go away. You know the reason why you're, uh, some people's lives, they can't get it straight? Because they're involved, they're, they got their nose in somebody else's life too much. We got enough with our life, man, okay? We got enough uh, heartache and enough stuff going on in our life that we can barely take that. Get your nose, get, uh, look, get Moses, uh, I don't know what he's thinking, Get my name out of your mouth. Come on. Get my Ethiopian woman who I'm going to marry, whatever her name, the Ethiopian woman was her name as far as we're concerned. Get her out of your mind and your mouth. That's none of your business. You should just be praying for her. <clears throat> That's what Miriam's problem was, and God gave her leprosy. So are you talking about somebody? You're saying, man, he should do this. The preacher should preach about this. We had a guy who said, man, he, he needs to preach on this more. Ooh, watch out. He's not here no more. He should preach on this more. I'm sorry. I thought I'd get my, my messages from Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I think, I think I should preach what he wants me to preach. Number two. Because Moses took it, God took it and handled it. You get that? If you would be meek yourself, and we all need this, if you humble yourself and don't open your mouth, God will take care of it. Hello? You know what I'm talking about. Somebody told me the other day, you know, what somebody had done and, uh, you know, um, asked me, you know, <laughs> uh, what I should do and ask, or asked me what they should do and if they should do anything. And I said, no, don't do anything. Don't do anything. Because if you stick your nose in it, if you try to fix it, God will not fix it. God can't fix it because you messed it up already. You won't fix it the way he wants to. And that is hard. That is hard for me to do. I don't know about you. But it's hard for me to shut up about anything. When I see wrong, um, you know, when I see somebody doing I just you know, and and I shouldn't stick my nose, I just want to you know, grab them and say, this is what you need to do, or don't do this, or don't do that. How about, preacher, if you shut up and let God take care of it? That's your time to say amen now. <clears throat> it's true, okay? God, it's God's battles. It's God, because he gets the glory, so it's his battle. He don't want you to take care of it. You're going to mess it up anyway. We mess up everything. <clears throat> if we would just be still and let the Lord fight our battles. 
Sit still and know that I am God, the Bible says. God is coming down. It's just, you know, we hold our peace and remain humble and don't take matters into our own hands when we don't have to. God will come down. And when he does, his justice is a lot better than my revenge. Barabbas, he was a rebel. He spoke against Rome and authority. He was, he, you know, he was set to be killed. But God had different ideas for Barabbas, didn't he? We would have killed him. He deserves murder, but God says, no, I'm going to let my son die in your place, and you're going to go free. You never know what God's going to do. Just trust him. And, uh, you know, I, I have never told you to follow some man, Okay. What are, whatever, you know, he believes or does. I'm talking about leaders. Just because he's a leader, okay, you don't follow him. You better, te- you better be sure he's t- speaking the truth and knows what he's talking about. Well, I'm following him because he's the president. I respect the office, but I'm not following that nincompoop. You can do what you want, say what you want. He's evil. The whole bunch of them's evil as far as I'm concerned. I don't have to study what he believes or anything. I know if he believes in abortion, he's evil. That's all, that's as far as I got to go. He or she. And God thinks the same way. If anybody offends one of my little ones, it's better than a millstone be wrapped around his neck and be thrown in the deepest sea. You think when you butcher a baby, you offend them? You offend God, too. <clears throat> we have raised a generation of people who are so into themselves. It has destroyed the ability for this nation to hold anything together, to get any unity, to get anything done. Nobody's willing to compromise for a greater good. Nobody. That's the leadership you have. Everybody's for himself. That was the attitude of Aaron and Miriam, Miriam mostly. Divorce rates are going up. Churches are splitting. People are quitting. Believers are quitting because nobody's willing to compromise for the greater good. Everybody's going their own way. Like sheep have gone their own, all their own way. We've gone astray. Everybody wants to lead and nobody wants to follow. You are no leader unless you learn to follow. Amen. God's way brings order out of confusion. Order, isn't that what the, what, isn't that what the judge says? Order in the court? And everybody starts clapping or talking about a, a verdict or whatever and, and rejoicing or, or they're mad or whatever. Order! Hey, order into my court. And that's what God's going to say too one day. There will be order. The original sin occurred against the order of God. God had set up. God set everything up, and everything was working great. And Adam and Eve were following God and following God in the garden and doing what he said. Every, and look, everybody was, uh, I hate to say this, and Julie's going to get mad, but everybody was walking around naked drinking uh, fruit juice. They didn't know they were naked. Who cares? They were a lot cooler than us. That was funny. But then an attitude crept in. Not just a spirit, though. It was a spirit, though, but there was, it was Satan himself. Crept in in the form of a serpent, a snake, and said, surely God has not said you can only eat from one tree. He knows when you do, you'll be like him. Go ahead. Don't listen to God. That's how you got yourself in trouble. You never went to church and listened to God, did you? That's how I got in trouble. I listened to Satan himself. I didn't worry about the order of things and what God wanted. I only wanted what I wanted. God set up a beautiful order, okay? You hear the pride and in saying, surely God has not said that. He didn't mean that. 
Surely the preacher, he didn't mean what he said. Surely you wouldn't preach against that. Surely this or that. Look, you have to worry about getting rid of me. God will get rid of me. Do you understand? God's big enough to get rid of a preacher. I know preachers have ruined people's lives and all that stuff. But, and I'm not going to say you don't have to worry about me. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. But I'm too old to do any, to run off with a woman or anything like that. I'll run off with my wife to the lake. Amen? And, and I've got enough, uh, uh, God's given me enough stuff. I've got a nice house and everything. I don't need to run off with the money. Okay? But God, God knows people's hearts. There's other things God can get you, or not God, Satan can get you with. I'm not stupid enough. I realize I got to keep walking with God and everything like that, but I also got to keep my attitude about people and watch out about talking about people. Let God come down and take care of it. All right? <clears throat> Number three, boy, I got, I got 10 minutes. Where'd that come from? Sheesh. Number Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God, right? I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. God can take care of the heathen. He said, I'll get the glory out of the heathen. I'll get them to give me the glory. Rebellion is a spirit. So whenever it comes into our lives, it has, to, it has come to throw us out of order. Out of order to get you out of church on Sunday night, on Wednesday night. The order in your life. Rebellion comes to get you, you personal. Not your husband, not your marriage. Sometimes you're, well, I, you know what I'm talking about, but it's a personal thing. He won't come after you through the people you love. He'll do it too. But you've got to be wise enough to see it and strong enough to stay in order. Um, I'm not so concerned about so much uh, the church. I want you to identify this spirit in your life, in your marriage, in your children. Rebellion is a spirit, okay? It, mer it, it makes you tear up the order in your life. Well, what does God say about it? God preaches a lot harder than I do. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So if you stop coming on Wednesday night when you can because you want to because you're a little rebellious spirit, God says you're wearing a black pointed hat and you're on a broom. Not exactly, but you know what I mean. You're, you're, you're practicing witchcraft if you don't tithe. I didn't say it. You're rebellious. When you, when you gossip and talk about the preacher or anybody in this church, why did she marry and why are you marrying her? Why are you marrying him? You're a rebel, and you're that's as a sin of witchcraft. Hey, you're a witch. Be careful being a witch or a warlock, depending on your gender. Rebellion is a spirit. Remember, Satan said, if you do this, you're going to be like God. Okay. <clears throat> Number four. I'm almost done already. Rebellion often starts with admiration. Rebellion often starts with admiration, and I think this is a good one. I'm going to pat myself on the back because I've been through this, and so have you. Watch out for people who will start out at your feet, but they'll end up at your throat. They'll start out worshiping you and saying such nice things to you. Oh, you're the best of the rest. You are it. You are the beans in my gravy. You are this, you are that. They'll end up wanting to cut your throat. I know it's quiet and you're tired, but that's the truth. Be careful, you'll get leprosy. Maybe not the white skin, but you'll get a bad spirit. I don't want God to just throw me to the side. I want to be used till I go to heaven. <clears throat> When God says things in order, leave them alone. Leave them alone. I think I wrote that down there. I'm not sure. When Jesus sets things in order, leave them alone. Leave them alone. 
The absence of God's order in our lives is the beginning of chaos and heartache in our life. The world will tell you, have sex, all right, have kids, and then get married. That's out of order. God says you fall in love, okay, and you get married, then you have sex, and then you have kids. That's the order. I don't care if it makes you mad or not. You made the mistake. I happen not to make that mistake, but I've made other mistakes. I've gotten other things. Uh, I got in debt when we were first married, didn't we? We, we? we were going to Bible college, and we thought, oh, no, we are $1,200 in debt. We'll never get out of debt. That's nothing. I know people that sit across my desk that are thirty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in debt. And credit cards alone, $30,000. And I look back, I'm so worried at $1,200, but it was big. It might have been twenty. It To us, it was like twenty being $20,000 in debt. The world says, go ahead and buy it first. You go ahead and buy it, okay? And then, you know, you can find a job, and then you'll pay it. No, God says you work first. You work first, and then you buy it. Okay? When, no, you work, you save, and then you buy. The world says, don't worry about saving. You just go ahead and buy it. Put it on a credit card. Charge it! And it got you in trouble, didn't it? Why? Because you got things out of order. You get things out of order. That's why, you know, the world's on a bobsled to hell. We got our own order. Be careful, folks, who only love you in secret. I love my wife. I don't care who knows about it. I love Jesus. I don't care who knows about it. You can, you know, you need to stand up and say you love Jesus. That might keep you awake. I know it's hot in here. Uh, it's just they're doing all they can, okay? Um, I pray for them every day. What worse can... God do to us than leave us. There's no worse than that, right? The only people he, he leaves are people in hell. Yeah. There's a great gulf that you don't have to worry about Jesus leaving you if you're saved. Who's saved in here? He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Marry him and all it is all in Moses' business. You could, she's a Marrying this, this Ethiopian woman. And uh, you could say, Marion was all up in Moses' grill. Amen? I like that. You're up in my grill, homie. Get back. Anyway. <clears throat> but Moses wasn't saying anything back to her. Isn't that funny? Moses who had the courage to speak to kings and confront Pharaoh, but he doesn't say anything. He doesn't push back or say anything to this lady and Aaron Okay, even though things were out of order and he knew it, he was trying to get everything in order. So Moses won't say anything to Miriam. So God comes. Some battles you win in life, you will only win because God comes down. All hell was about to break out in this mess. And more ladies were going to get involved and more men and everything. God said, nope, nope, okay. Haven't you ever said, God, if you'll get me out of this, I'll do this or do that? That's what Aaron, Aaron was doing right there. Oh, Lord, I, uh, I saw you get her skin turned white. Now, Lord, now, Lord, you know I love you now. Uh, uh, Lord, if you'll do this, I'll become a high priest. God's saying, you're going to become a high priest whether you do anything or not. Because I want you to. <clears throat> and then... Well, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's the worst God can do to you. If we don't discern he is part of us, we will never be put back together. You were broken, right? Well, he was broken so you can be put back together. Amen? Don't waste your time with other people's lives. You've got enough, okay? You've got enough problems with yourself. 
And I'm going to just shut her down there. I got more, but anyway. She's waving at me, so. Man, can you believe I let Ethan shut me up? Oh, no. Let's watch our spirit. Let's watch our spirit. We don't have bad spirit. We have a good spirit. And you pray for your pastor that I can discern bad spirit. It's the worst thing to have to deal with somebody you love that has a bad spirit. But you've got to do it. If you're a leader, you've got to pull the trigger. You've got to deal with it. That's why this church split. Not because of anything else but me. I didn't deal with the problem. Years ago. Years ago. It split because I thought it would take care of itself. And people were yakking, yakking, yakking about stupid stuff that didn't mean anything. And it started with a woman. It always starts with a woman. Just kidding. <laughs> watch. Men are the worst gossip. I tell you that right now. But watch your spirit. Have you been talking about the pastor? Have you been talking about somebody and what they're doing? Why are they doing this? Why, not, not just necessarily why are they marrying somebody, okay, but why did they take that job? Why, why did so-and-so, why did Roy ask so-and-so to help him and he didn't ask me to help him? Maybe because you can't cook. You ever figure that one out? Amen. Why did preacher promote so-and-so? Why did preacher ask so-and-so? Why did Cindy do this? Why did Cindy not let me do this and let so-and-so do this? Why did John not let me work in the sound booth? You, you can name it. I can go on and on. Are you talking like that? Be careful. I know you'll say that I don't mean any harm and I'm just trying to help. Well, we all think that, and I'm sure Marion thought that way. But God thought different, didn't he? You do things in order. You don't talk about nobody. If you've got... You go to them and say, I got something we need to work out. Can I speak to you? Be woman enough or man enough to do that. And then you'll keep things in order. You won't have to lose sleep over it or anything like that. Okay? Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for being a God that we can always come to. Help us to keep things in order in our lives. We get all messed up. Me too. Everybody does. We want to jump the gun and get ahead of you. You said, just sit still. Sit still and know I am God. I will come down. I will take care of you. I hold the universe in my hands. I, I, I put my 